What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Ask Me. Uh, I'm Vitz, and uh, I'm here with my co-host, Tom Leonardis. What's up, Leo? What's going on? Three weeks in a row. I'm honored now. Yep, we do this episode each week. And uh, in addition to my... Can you stop moving? You're Sorry. like swaying side to side. You're making me nervous. Hold, it hold, hold still. This guy's like swaying back and forth like a weed in the wind. It's annoying. Um, We're editing this out. <laughs> so, so we do this uh, this podcast uh, once a week. And then we also I have my other one that is called uh, Business Secrets for Gym Owners with Uncle Vinny. It's kind of where I go into my alter ego and start yelling at gym owners to do better. <laughs> go do more. Do better. Uh, so that's the other one. Uh that we do. And then once per month this year, I'm very excited about this once per month. Uh, I started uh, back in September, but once per month we've, or I have a guest on where I'll do a traditional podcast interview. That's with a guest. My first one was with the great Ari Weinswick from Zingerman's. My second one was with Adam Lincoln Auger, the YouTube sensation. My third one is coming out as we record this tomorrow with the head visionary, the CEO of EOS, Mark O'Donnell, who many of you have not heard of, but you've definitely have heard of the book Traction. Um, and EOS is the business system around traction. And uh, Mark is the head guy there now, and he's a personal friend of mine and the guy that really taught me everything about EOS. Um, so I'm super excited for that to be released. Uh, so be, stay tuned for that one. It's going to be good. Very cool. All right. So um, – we got a bunch of cool stuff going on in the community. We have um, our Black Friday sale that uh, just went off the chain. We have more people than we can handle right now. Uh, we actually had to shut it off. We had to actually literally bolt the door shut and not let any more people in because we were uh, not able to fulfill all the orders. Um, but we sold uh, for a $1 trial to New Client Academy. Um, the rights to 50 strong, right? So all the materials that we use to promote uh, 50 strong, which is our, the challenge that we run at GFP in January. And it's what many others have used as well. And um, we, we wanted to do it during Black Friday to have, to let everyone get it ready for the new year. And uh, typically sometimes it takes time to like load the emails in and to even write the emails, even though I wrote them for you, you still got to, you still got to change my name and put yours in, right? <laughs> so it does take some time. Um, but no, there will be some edits that you'll need to make and just to get everything ready, right? But but you want to start the year strong. You want to start the year, you know, with a really good marketing plan um, to get it, to take advantage of the people that are excited about getting healthy and getting fit this, this year. Um, so we got that and we got the six-week – New client surge coming up. That's starting in mm -hmm. um, January. January 30th is the first module of the six-week new client surge. You just go to sixweekclientsurge.com and you get all the info there. We'll put the link into the show notes uh, to get info on the surge. And then we have our next mastermind meeting coming up in March. So a lot of cool stuff flying around in our, in our world, in our community. So yeah. my question asker is here. Yep. Yeah. 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 We uh, how, you, had, how, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. We have 96. We didn't bolt the door hard enough for the amount of people that signed up for the uh, the uh, dollar trial for the 50 strong, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's just too many. Well, the door's <laughs> bolted now. No more. No more. I'm done. No more. Yeah. Um, all right. So I got a couple of good questions for you today. Um, should help a lot of people. A lot of people that I've been talking to with all these people coming through. Uh, I've been asked a lot of these questions, so it's good to hear from you with them. So one of the ones is, I don't know how, I don't know what I should be charging. I know I'm already charging a few dollars more than the gym down the street, but I feel like my time is worth more. How much should I charge for my small group training is the first part. Um, then it goes into how do I go? About right, 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 hold on, hold on. You can ask the second part. Okay. Okay. So a couple of things is on price. Um, one is what you have to understand is that Price is way more emotional than it is mechanical, right? I'm going to share with you some mechanical things about price and what to do and how to think about it and even some math to help you make some decisions, right? Mm -hmm. 
But at the end of the day, understand that all of the gripes and worries we have about price is all of this uncertainty around what people are going to say if it's too expensive and the resistance that you may get, right? If all of a sudden you said, oh, my price, I'm going to, you know, charge a, uh, you know, $50 for a one-on-one, uh, or $30 for a one-on-one training session, you wouldn't even think twice about that. You'd be like, yeah, fine. That's good. I don't, I don't have any worries about that. No one's going to say no to that and I'll do it. Right. It's when you start getting into numbers that you're like, oh God, people could say no, People could give me resistance to that. That's when it starts to, we start to really think and be a lot very uncertain around it. So we'd look for things, you know, to lean on. Now, my story is, is uh, about prices um, is going to be an instru- instrumental one. So um, Vanessa and I are go- uh, going on vacation and we, you know how like when you go on vacation, the house is like a mess and there's just stuff flying around, the bags everywhere and stuff. Sure. Well, your animals, we had a cat and a dog at the time. We don't have the cat anymore. And we had a cat and a dog at the time. I think this is before kids too. Um, the cats sense, the, dog, the cats and dogs sense you're going away. They sense you're leaving. They know what's going on. And so we come upstairs and we're ready to go to bed. And the cat had shit right in the middle of our bed. <laughs> And I'm just like, what the, this cat has never pooped on our bed. Like ever once the cat's never pooped outside of the litter box, not once, but it was like something was happening that she wanted us to know that, Hey, I want you to pay attention to me. Right. <laughs> and so I found myself late at night going to target to get a do new cover for duvet. Cause the cat had pooped all over it. Right. And I'm looking through and I never bought a duvet thing in my life. Right. I don't know what these things cost. And so I'm like understanding that this is a purchase that we're going to use every day. It's something that is important, right? And I have no knowledge about them. The only knowledge I have is this. There's one that's a hundred bucks and there's one that's 47 bucks. The only knowledge I have about the one that's a hundred bucks is that it's more expensive. They look the same to me. Right from the from the package in, they looked exactly the same, but one's a hundred and one's forty seven. In my mind, which one is better? Well, the hundred dollar one's better. Of course, it is. It's a hundred dollars, right? And I think sometimes people need to hear that story. They need to understand is that just because you're a little bit more expensive does not mean for all people that are going to come into your gym that they're going to say, "Oh my God, how could you be charging that much of money?" For many people, that is a good thing. For many people, it is like, oh man, the most they they connect the most expensive with the best. And if you want to be known as the best, the most important thing is to be priced like the best. And if you want to be one of the best gyms in your area and you want to be also at the bottom of the food chain in terms of how much money you're charging, there's two things are going to happen. One, you're going to start attracting people that like to pay low prices. And we do know the people that like to pay low prices are also the ones that are going to give you the most hassles, right? But the second thing is you're going to put your business in a poor financial position by the price that you've chosen. The number one decision, the number one decision, aside from who your target market is, which also is a relative price kind of decision, right? But the number one decision that you need to make for your business to have a successful financial business is your prices, how much you're charging. So this question is right. This question is good and it's important. Um, So I think that um, what a lot of people do is a lot of people, they look at, you know, what the person down the street is charging and then they charge a little less and a little more. I think what really needs to happen is you need to look at your market. And you need to look at who you want to serve, right? And you need to base the price on what that person is willing to pay, right? What that person is willing to pay. Um, That's really what it is because then there shouldn't be this like law that you have on prices. Here's the thing though. I am going to give you a law because I do realize that everyone does need some guidance around it, okay? But the law is going to come with a couple of decisions. Now, here's my pricing law. And this comes straight out of my new book um, that I'm writing right now 
uh, the ultimate guide to small group personal training, which I'm super excited about. I'm 25,000 words in, um, about 5,000 words away from finishing this. We got a couple of case studies we're putting in there. Um, but the goal is that it's finished by the end of the year and that's released in Q1. Um, but I went through a formula um, based on all the people that I've helped with their pricing. And the formula is really built around one-on-one because when you're doing small group, the best comparison is one-on-one because if you're going to do small group successfully, you want it to be viewed as personal training. You do not want small group to be viewed as group training, right? Like classes. That word is the death of small group. It's just, just don't use it. Stop using it. Don't ever use it again. It's not, they're not classes. They're not classes. They're not classes. They're sessions, just like personal training sessions, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a situation with small group or semi-private, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, I define it as one coach to six people, four to six people. That's kind of what I define it as. Some people will do differently, but with the 101 gym owners that we work with that are doing this successfully, that's kind of the model that most of us are using, right? Um, So you want it to be looked at as personalized coaching. That's what you want. It's Mm -hmm. just they're getting personalized coaching, but they're just happen to be sharing with other people at the same session. All right. So that's the first thing. And so a good comparison to small group relative to that is one-on-one, right? And so what I here's what I like to do. I like to say whatever your one-on-one rate is, okay, or the one-on-one rate of your best competitor in your area, okay, and raise it 10%, right? Because you know you're not charging enough money, okay? This is how you get your small group. You raise it 10%. So if you charge 100 bucks, you're going to raise it 10% to 110. And then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply it by 40 to 60%. Okay? 40 to 60%. And then you will get the amount of money that you can charge for a small group. That is kind of the formula that I use. So essentially, if we want to take a sweet spot, and I'll use just the number um, 100 Let's say I chose 50, if it's a base of $100 is the one-on-one rate, I choose 55%, right? 40 to 60, 55%. My small group semi-private rate is $55, right? If I take $55, I multiply that by six people in a session. What is that, Leo? That's 330 bucks an hour. If I have... You know, so so we're looking at a very, very profitable hour. If you can do a couple of those at once, I know at GFP, we had sessions recently where we had three groups of six going on at one time yeah. uh, at the gym, right? So if you take what we charge, we're around 50, I think we're at $51, right? Is it 50? What between, is it? Between 50, four, well, depending on the prices, between 45 and 55. 55, right? Just, let's call it 50 for now. But like, if we take that, we had 18 people in an hour. You take 18 people and you divide that, um, you well, multiply well, that by 18. That's a pretty profitable hour. We could kind of do a couple of those a day yeah, and be and, and be off to the sunset here. Yeah. Um, so all is good. Um, what do you think of all that, Leo? I actually just got to get my charger. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, it's, it works. Um, a lot of times we try to do as much money as we can all in one shot too. But if you have other people doing it, it's much easier to hit that mark. It is definitely something that takes practice and you have to be able to, to own it as well. But at the end of the day, I was just talking about how making people own it, Vince, like you, you have to understand now you have to provide that product. It's not just going to be something that's just thrown at. You you ever ever seen the movie Wayne's world? Yes. Yeah, remember the part when Wayne's just leaves the set right in the middle and Garth's mm-hmm. left alone? Yeah. And he's like, okay, I'm doing the show now, right? Yeah. Do you remember that part? Yeah, I think I did better than that. Yeah, I think that was I- just you. That was just you. You were Garth. 
You're <laughs> gone. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think great. I did better than Garth. I didn't think I sounded as bad as <laughs> uh, Myers, but it definitely worked. Oh, uh, that was great. I wasn't expecting uh, that was to do great. that, though. And I was like, yeah. what about no, my charge. Well, my, my computer's about to die, so I had to just run and get my charger in my backpack really quick. Okay. Um, so anyway, so that's like the formula that uh, I've used for many, many years. And I think that's just you want to look at it as like how much money can you make per hour with a full session, right? That's an important number to look at. And, you know, that needs to equate to, you know, from a from a daily perspective, how many sessions you can do a day, uh, how many sessions you do a week, how many sessions you do a year. And that's got to add up to how much money you want to make from a personal standpoint. Right. So there's really more math that needs to be done. But if you're, I mean, I've had people that come to me, they're charging $14 a session for semi private training. And it's just like, if you take 14 times six, it's not a lot of money. And really, you can't do it times six anyway, because you're never going to have six across the board. You're always going to have a gap between what is capacity and what is actual. There always will be a gap. And it's probably around an 80%. Or tw- sorry, twenty percent gap. You're probably going to be like at eighty. Per- if you're doing really well, you're going to be at eighty percent. Yep. So you're never going to be able to like do the real math and be like, oh, if we have six people every session, but that's not going to happen. So it's never. So take whatever your number is, that six number, if that's the most you'll take in a session, and really use four and a half or five or whatever you want to use, yep. because it never. And if you do have six, you have a problem, right? And and you're moments away from needing to add payroll and add stuff to it um, just because people are going to start getting pissed. And you're going to might have attrition issue because people are start getting pissed off. Um, but that's kind of what I use for our guys is just taking that one-on-one rate, getting the courage to move it up a little bit. Well, you don't even need to really move it up. You can just, you know, like falsely move it up and then just take that for your one-on-one price. But I, that's kind of, I added that in as my formula because I realized that a lot of people do need to raise their rates um, and this is a way to just get a little more from your one on uh, from your small group, uh, semi private. But so it's taking that 40 to 60 percent. Where do you want to be? You know, obviously, you're going to make more money if you're on the higher end. And I do take into account 40, 60 percent is relative to if you're in, you know, a, you know, a lower demographic area, you may not you may need to be closer to 40. Um, if you're in a metropolitan area like New York city, you may be even higher than 60, right? So kind of use that as your, as your kind of barometer, if you will. Uh, but I think it's a pretty standard formula, um, to try to get a really good solid price, but anything below that, you're going to be, you know, um, kind of balking up the price tree in the wrong way. Yeah. Speaking about rates, how, how does someone go about raising uh, their rates for, for grandfathered members. How would you just pull the bandaid off or what? I mean, I'm getting that question all the time. I have these clients paying a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think some of it is like how grandfathered are they, right? Are they just, are they really grandfathered? I mean, did you look them in the eyes and said, I will never ever raise your rates ever until you die like like that's not like did you do that like if you did it's kind of silly i think it's bad advice like to tell someone to like we will never ever raise your rates for as long as you're that's dumb that's dumb i've never told anybody to do that and i don't think you should do that Mm -hmm. starbucks raised my coffee by three dollars in the last three months and they suck way worse than they ever have before oh yeah right it's like every other business is raising prices but oh no we we're helping people so we can't raise prices this is bullshit like just no do it so the answer to this is yeah to go do it i mean um it, it's it, it's a letter right you know it's it's a letter i do like the i don't think like let's say you're in this position that um you're going to like you're charging you know you're you're charging thirty dollars now, and you're totally changing around your price structure. Like, let's say you heard this formula and you were charging a lot less, and you want to start ch- charging sixty bucks a session, right? I don't think it's fair to raise your on your current members that much, right? And you don't have to use the same strategy. So, I like personally between a t- ten to twenty percent price raise on current members. I think that once you go beyond that, it it gets to be like your, uh, and not to say that it you would lose everybody, but uh, I think if you stay within that, um, 
percentage of an increase, you're probably in a, in, a, in a good area. I think you can raise your prices as much as you want on new members going forward, right? That you don't need to use that. That's the difference. It's like there's a difference between raising prices on current members and, and raising prices on new members going forward. You do not need the same strategy. You don't need to write a letter for new members going forward. You really just need to. Um, and we have a whole thing in SPF that Joe wrote, Hashi. Yep. Um, right. called the guide to raising prices where he talked to, he had a price raise where he raised his prices uh, about a year after COVID and raised his prices on 800 members and literally did not lose a single person. So we took that process that he used and we replicated it. And that's what we give to mastermind members when they come in is that price raise guide. Yep. Um, it talks about the video that you do. It talks about the email you write and basically how you word it and how you present it. How you present it is also really important. I think that uh, the breakdown is instead of saying we're going to charge you you know, X more a month, um, breaking it down to an X dollars per session, right? Um, where it's like $3 a session. If they come three times a week, it's 10 bucks a week and it's, you know, $40 a month. Well, three bucks a session sounds a lot better than $40 a month, right? So some of it is to how it's presented and how it's wrapped to the clients, but also to justifying and telling them why you're raising the rates. I had a dumbass client once that says, we are raising our rates because of inflation. And I was just like, I was like, how, how did you to just look at this and think that this is like the right thing to say? Like, it was just like, it boggled my mind. He's no longer a client. And, you know, I'm surprised if he's still in business, right? But the reality of the situation is, it's like, that's what, that's the reason. That's the reason you're going to give somebody a doubt. The reason is, reasons are, we're committing to this education for our staff. We're committing to this new equipment. We're doing this. We're doing that. There's got, and even if you're not doing anything that costs you a lot of money, you still need to get creative with explaining like why you're um why you're raising the price on them not not because of the economy not because of inflation not no because of the value that they're going to get as a member right that's what because of the better things you're going to do the new things you're going to do the value that they're going to get the how their life is going to be better because of they're a member at this gym that is why we are raising this price not because I want to go on vacation not because of inflation not because of any other reason as what's in it for you, because that is what people are walking through their life. They're thinking of what is in it for me? Why are they raising their prices on me? What am I going to get from this? Is this here to help me? Is this here to hurt me? Um, and I will tell you that most people, if you do it right, will be totally fine. I have had people say to me, what took you so long? I've had people, right? You know, so so you know, so things. Some people would just be like, and those are the people you need to think about when you're raising prices. You need to think of the people that says you should have raised your prices a while ago versus the one person that's like, oh yeah, and you got this person in your head right now. It's like, oh, I know Mrs. Jones is going to get so pissed at me. She's going to get so mad that I raised her from you know nineteen dollars to twenty four dollars a month. Like she's going to be so pissed about that. And the reality is don't don't think about her. Think about the people that you know are going to appreciate the added value that you're, you're going to bring to the business. But again, it kind of goes back to what I said in the beginning. A lot of this is very emotional. It's all made up in our minds. And the other thing we go through is we go through this head trash, what I call it, of thinking that if I raise the price, everyone's going to quit. That is what that is what we do inside our own minds. We're like, all right, if I raise this price, everyone's going to go away. No one's going to come back. Everyone's going to say it's too expensive. They're all going to tell their friends and no one's going to come. Like we build up this narrative in our head and it just, it just doesn't exist. It's just trash that we make up in our own minds. Now, I do believe it can be botched. I do believe if you do it wrong that you could suffer from, from a decision to raise your prices. But I think if it's done well, if you're not skewering people, and you're doing it in a progressive way and you're justifying it with good backup of how you're going to add value to their life should go off pretty seamless. Yeah. I love that. Uh, and we've had 
God, what, over 40 mastermind members this year? Close to it, right? Yeah. And we sent this that same packet from Hashi to all of them because all of them asked, how do I, because they're all issues where their prices were too cheap. I've, I haven't had a conversation with any of them where they said, oh my God, I lost one person. Yeah. So, and the other thing is to do, and I don't have the time today to do it, but there's a pretty simple math equation, right, of how you can figure this out even if you do lose people, that it's probably still financially a gain for you. Okay. Like, so for example, like if you, I don't want to get into it because, um, but the reality is you probably can lose twice as many members as you think you're going to lose and still be okay in a couple months, right? There may be a couple months. The, the examples that I've shown, it's like maybe one to two months, you're down a little bit. And then it just compounds the months after that because all the new people are getting at the newer prices. So it usually ends up working out in your favor. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, I'm in the process of creating a scoreboard. I have never used one before and always just use my bank account as the telltale sign that we are in a good or bad position. If I'm looking at the following metrics, leads, consults booked, and sales made, how do I know what is good for my business? Okay. So be more Starbucks. The the um the number one truth teller in your business. Okay. The number one truth teller in your business is your data. You got to understand that you got to know that, that you can't know what's going on in your business if you don't have these numbers. Okay. Now there's different types of numbers. There's what's called leading indicators and there's called lagging indicators. Lagging indicators is like your example is your profit and loss statement. It's kind of like looking at the scoreboard when the game is over. You, you can't change it. You can't change the outcome of the game. Your leading indicators are like looking at the scoreboard after the first quarter of the game, meaning you can see that all right, we're down by three points and we're going to make this adjustment and this change so we can get to even by halftime, right? And those numbers are the numbers on your scoreboard, which is kind of what we're talking about today. So you got to understand there's two sets of numbers. Your Your cash in the bank is going to fluctuate, right? Some once when your payroll hits, your cash is going to, you know, go down. You know, if your payroll hasn't hit for a while, it's going to go up and you're going to be like to have this misleading thought of, like, oh, I got all this money. And then two days later, you're going to look at it and it's all going to be almost gone. And then you're like, what happened? And you're like, oh, yeah. Remember those people that are training all the sessions for you? That's called payroll. They got to get paid. Um, so it's going to fluctuate. It's going to go up and down. The number one thing you need to understand in cash is you got to have a cushion. And your cushion needs to be about three to six months of expenses. You got to have that. If you don't have that, you're probably going to have anxiety about cash. And so if you need something you know, to focus on, it's getting to that three-month mark of cash in the bank. So if your expenses are 20000 you need to have 60000 sitting in your account. And that's just something that you want to have. It's just a safe bet um, to do. It should be the same thing at your home personal finances as well. Um, it's just something to have. Um, but the leaning indicators are basically the numbers that will be um, predictive of what the profit and loss statement will say, right? So if you have a certain goal of an amount of money to make, whether revenue or whether it's profit, there are certain numbers that will be um, needed to hit to be able to do it. Now, I like these kind of four numbers as the metrics, right? Because I try to keep it as simple as possible for people. Like I don't like try like people tracking like a thousand different numbers and that and yes, can you go deeper on this? Absolutely. But at base level, you need to know how many leads you got. You need to know how many of those leads came in for a consultation. You need to know how many of those consultations or free trials, whatever you kind of do. I'm just using consultations right? Uh, how many of them signed up for memberships and whether you do month to month memberships, annual memberships, doesn't matter. And then you need to know how many clients churned, how many clients you lost, right? And if you look at that, it's like, that's very base level. There are other numbers that we track on a monthly basis, but on in terms of a weekly basis, if you're looking at a scoreboard, that is the, 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 the art of getting clients and keeping clients. Because that is a business, right? A business is really about getting clients and keeping clients and then building that into cash. That is the whole um, 
outline of a business. And that, that scoreboard that I just gave you gives you the numbers. There's three numbers for getting and there's one number for keeping. And that's what you really need to focus on is the, the, those metrics that will lead you down the path to who do we need to get and how many do we need to keep and and um, how are you making sure that we're doing this profitably and you know having enough cash left over at the end of the month to kind of um, to do what we need to do. So that's probably what I would say is like less is more on the scoreboard. Don't think you need to track everything, but what you need to do is you need to get really good at those numbers and then you need to set goals around what you want to hit right so for example you need to know how many leads you want to have if you just look at the amount of leads you got and you don't have anything to compare it to then it's just like a weird random number so for example if you need you know 40 leads to be successful you need to know that that that's what you need to be successful. If you don't know that number, then that number you got doesn't mean anything. So um, there needs to be a goal and then there needs to be an actual. What's the goal? And then what's the actual? And then you need to, to compare the two. If you hit the goal, that means you're on track. It means you're going in the right direction. Um, if you don't hit the goal, there's a problem that you need to solve. And that's your to-do list. You want to know what to do all day? Well, that's it. If you want to know what to do all day, solve the problems on the problems on your scoreboard. If your leads are off track, solve that problem. If your con conversions are off track, solve that problem. If your retention's off track, solve that problem. So it really comes back to having clarity on the most important numbers, having a goal for those numbers, and then being able to know what to do, which is a whole nother gamut, right? being able to know what to do to get it back on track. Yeah. All right. Uh, so another question I, that I got from a new client Academy person the other day was how do you audit the business? Cause you, they, they still feel like they're bleeding, they're hitting their numbers, but they just can't seem to get out of the mud. What are some of the techniques you've used to kind of say to yourself, all right, something's up. Let's find this leaky bucket. Where's this hole? Um, so the number one hole I look for is, is the retention hole. And, you know, that that's really where you need to look first because it's a lot more expensive to get a customer than it is to keep a customer. Yeah. So you got to understand that, that it is the, the biggest leak for you to, 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 to be losing clients on a high level. I like to see businesses in our world running at 5% or less. And what that means is that if you have 100 clients, you can expect to lose five clients a month. And if you're losing a lot more than that, you're kind of giving yourself a little bit of a marketing problem. So you got to understand that. So that's probably the biggest one I see. The number one reason that I think people um, have that problem is they don't realize how many they are actually losing because they don't track this stuff. I'm shocked at how many people don't track this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I didn't track it when I started my gym. Like, I didn't track any numbers. I didn't track how many leads we got. I didn't track any of that shit. Like, I don't know how we made it. Mm -hmm. um, right? But but they're, they're still, here we are. You know, I've been talking about this for years. And there's other good coaches out there that have been talking about this for years. I mean, Thomas Plummer was the first person that told this to me. Like, you're, he's like, here's your business plan. Leads, trials, contracts. Leads, trials, contracts. Leads, trials, contracts. That's like all he would talk about. Right? Is it, that's your business. That's your business. And he was the one that really kind of helped me focus on those numbers and how important those data points are. But a lot of people today, like they don't know, like what's your retention rate? I have no idea what I do. Like you need to know what it is. You need to know on average how many clients you're losing. Um, and, you know, obviously from a monthly basis, that's important. Um, but from a trend standpoint, Mike Waldron, who's the CEO of Carmel Valley, who's my best friend in the world, he says that you got to look at it from a trend standpoint. And I agree with him, right? You can't just look at one month. And go, oh my God, we had 10% attrition. No, you didn't. You had one bad month where it's probably half of them moved away and there was an anomaly. But if you have three months in a row where you have 10% attrition, now you have a trend. Now you have something to look into. You have some data. So I think it's important to look at it. But that's honestly the biggest leaking bucket. Um, the first biggest, right, is retention. The second biggest is follow-up. 
the the second, which is where you're the master, right? Right? Like I don't, we don't have that problem in this business, and we don't have that problem in this business because of you, because you will hound people until they'll like screw you, dude. Stop calling me. Don't ever call me again. And 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 Leo's like, what? It's only Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> 7:45 a.m. is when I yeah get right, <laughs> uh, but that's the that's the other big leak. The big money leak is in the follow up. Um, you know, Kennedy has the line. Fortune is in the follow up. Uh, I think there's massive money being left on the table on not following up with um, uh, your unconverted leads, not following up with your past clients, not following up with the new leads that come through the door uh, fast enough and often enough and everything like that. So I think that's the second biggest money leak, um, and that doesn't cost you much any money, right? It doesn't really cost you. It's just a little more energy, a little more effort, a little more intensity, a little more of um, tenacity to be able to kind of get people to to convert. Um, so that's that's really I mean, here's the thing. We sold all of our Black Friday. We were doing really well, but we were still sending follow up emails to people that didn't buy. We sent follow up emails to people that that clicked the link to buy the page and didn't bought didn't buy more than just right? emails. Absolutely. Yeah, and we sent emails and stuff, and 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 here's the, here's the thing: we we have enough buyers. It's not like we don't have enough buyers, but it's just following the good building blocks of good business, right? And that you're committed to being a business that follows up on a very very consistent basis. So that's the second biggest money leak. The first is retention, um, and the second is is follow up. Perfect, love it. All right, last one for you today. I can't get my clients to refer. What can I do during the holidays to get more clients through referrals? So uh, the number one thing you got to understand is that you have to earn referrals through good business first. Yeah. If you're not getting any, any referrals naturally, there's likely a problem. Right. There's likely an internal problem if you're not getting any referrals naturally, because naturally it should kind of happen. Now, if you're kind of check the box and you're naturally getting some referrals, I'm not, I'm not saying you need to get a lot of referrals. I'm saying you should get some, right? A good being good business means you should just get some just because it's natural. Um, I think if you want a lot of referrals, you're going to have to be what I call intentional with it. Yeah. Meaning you're going to have to do things that are intentional to drive referrals to get them. You got to earn that, but by, by doing good work, right? Um, but I think that having several intentional referral tactics is um, is how you're going to get more referrals. So um, in my six week new client search program, I have a whole gamut on this where I go through you know a ton of different ones, a ton of different intentional referrals. But I'll give you guys one that I think is really good for this time of year, and it's a uh, it's basically uh, called the, we call it the holiday card system, where you give out a gift around the holidays, mm -hmm. and the gift it's to your members, and it comes with like a letter and a little card and. You send the letter to your members thanking them for being a great member, and then you give them a card, whether that's a black metal card, whether that's a gift card, whether that's a wedding invitation style card. It is a gift that gives one of their friends a free membership or a free month or whatever offer you want to do. We do free 30 days, right? And so now what you're doing is you're telling your members, hey, it's end of November. You're starting to think about holiday gifts. Here's one that you can give to – you can give it to your spouse. You can give it to a family member. You can give it to a neighbor. Um, and it's basically what you're doing is you're giving them a free Christmas gift or a free holiday gift to give to a friend. Um, so you're taking a gift off their list because it's a valuable thing. Like you're giving someone a month of a gym membership. Well, that that month could change their life. And that month is also worth $500, right? Because it's a $500 value. So it's not a small thing. It's not like, hey, here's a, you know, uh, a t-shirt. Give yeah. this to your friend. It's no, this is like a full on, th this, this experience has changed people's lives for the better many times over. And that's what you're gifting them. You're gifting them that opportunity to give. Um, so that's my favorite one. And you kind of do it around the holidays, 
because they're in gift giving mode already. And what you're doing is you're just taking a gift and um, kind of knocking it off their list. I There's probably not a referral program system tactic that's been more effective, that people have made more money than this one. I know there's two guys in our group that joined our mastermind a long time ago, like 2018, they joined. Both of them still in the group. Both of them in my highest level CEO mastermind. Both of them joined the group and did this play right away. And I think it was like the fire starter for everything. It was the fire starter of their growth. Um, so this is a really, really powerful process um, that that I think you can take and replicate that um, there is a whole module on this in the six-week new client surge program. So if you are interested in this holiday card system, you just go to surge and you can sign up for surge. And when you sign up for surge, you'll get access to this kind of marketing package, if you will. Um, what? It'll be in the show notes, six week. Okay. Client. Yeah. Six week client search. Um, but the, the, the holiday gift card systems in there. So, but I think it's going to be a really helpful, um, really helpful thing. But at the end of the day, if you want to get more referrals base level, you got to do your job. Second base level, you got to do things that are intentional that are going to help drive them. Perfect. Well, that's all I got for you today. All right. Well, that was three. Um, guys, thanks so much uh, for listening. Hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving and uh, we will see you on the next episode. Thanks so much. Good. What's up, guys? Thanks so much for listening. Do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. This way you'll get notified when we get new episodes come out. And if you really, really loved it, I'd truly appreciate it if you left us a five-star rating. So thanks so much. If you're looking for more free stuff uh, from me, head over to vincesfreebook.com. You'll get a free copy of my marketing book and just head over to vincesfreebook.com and I'll send you a copy. Thanks.